So let's understand how TSNI works on MNIST. Just to quickly refresh your memory, MNIST is this character data set with 784 dimensions that we saw earlier in this chapter, right? So we have 784 dimensional data, which we, which you're trying to project into two dimensions, right? So this is my dimension one, or let me call it F1 dash. And this is my dimension two, which is F2 dash, right? So as soon as I project it, th this is the final outcome. And how did I color them? I colored them in such a way that all the characters, so for example, my red here are all zeros, okay? Since I know, since my data set, for each data point, I have 784 dimensional data, but I also have the class label, right? So I've cover, I've colored my TSNI plot using the class label. One thing you'll notice is all your zeros are here, right? And these are your sixes, all your sixes are here, right? All your ones are here, okay? All your twos are here. See, as, as I move my mouse, I can quickly see this. And by the way, I forgot to mention, this is on uh, Christopher Ola's blog, okay? cola.github.io. So I, again, I showed this to you. I showed this page to you earlier in this chapter. So this is the Visualizing MNIST uh, web page on Christopher Ola's blog. This is this is one of the best blogs that I've come across explaining TSNI and MNIST very, uh, uh, TSNI and PCA on MNIST data very beautifully. Okay, now comes the interesting part. So since we have understood this, so there is one aspect that I wanted to go over. So all these are zeros, right? But I have one point here, which is actually five because these light blue colored points are my fives. So there is one five here, but if you notice that five, as I'm hovering my mouse around it, that five looks very much, very close to a zero. That's why it was, it was grouped together with zeros. Okay. From this plot, we cannot, we cannot interpret that. Okay. That the spread of that uh, zeros are here, ones are here. Okay. We cannot interpret, we cannot interpret. We cannot interpret cluster sizes, cluster sizes or intercluster distances or intercluster distances in TSNI, right? So we saw we saw this when we were going through the distal dot pub uh, pub examples, right? So I cannot say that okay, zeros are well spread and so are my ones, so are my I think these are sixes or fives, right? These are my sixes, right? So my sixes are also well spread. I cannot talk about how well spread the points are. So I cannot interpret the cluster sizes or the cluster distances. Suppose if this is one cluster and this is another cluster, I can't interpret this distance. There is no way I can interpret it. Okay. So you cannot interpret cluster sizes and intercluster distances from, from the previous video where we, where we saw how to interpret uh, TSNI outcomes, which we saw from distal.pub web page. Okay, but here the most important takeaway is that yes, TSNI in the high dimensional data set, so since I can't visualize 784 dimensions, I have two dimensional data. And when I visualize in this two dimensional data, first thing I notice is all of my zeros are grouped together. All of my sixes are grouped together. Here, if you see your fives, you have a bunch of fives here and you also have a bunch of fives here. Okay, now let's look at ones because ones are spread like this. So how do a one somewhere here in this region looks like a slant one, if you see, as I'm moving. And as I move farther and farther away inside, my one becomes straighter and straighter. Oh, this has become eight already, right? So as I move, so here, my ones in this region are slant. As I'm moving this in this direction, my ones as I reach here have become straight line ones, okay? So it is not just preserving all the ones, it's also putting ones which are written similarly close to each other, right? So let's again see that once more. So the ones that you see here are all slant, right? The ones as you're going away become straighter and straighter, which means it's not only separating all of your ones from rest of your characters, but also it's separating all of your slant ones in this region, all of your straight ones in this region, which is important, right? Which means whatever visually looks similar are getting grouped based on visual similarity, which is extremely important. Even similarly, right, this five looked more like this five looked like this, right? This five looked like this, right? Uh, let me let me just change my, okay, this five looked like that, right? Which is very similar to zero. And that's why it got grouped with zeros. So what my TSNI, what TSNI is achieving very successfully is it's saying that I will group points or I'll cluster points 
based on their visual similarity based on their visual similarity which is very very interesting now using tsni i have visualized a 784 dimensional data set by 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 embedding this data set into a 2d space successfully and the big lesson i learned is yes uh, points which are visually similar are grouped together are 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 are, are close together points which are less similar are farther away and if i if i color points by by their actual class label whether it is 1 0 5 6 etc they they tend to group together very very nicely this tells me that in my 784 dimensional space my points are visually grouped and i can easily build simple models even simple mod because the data set is well separated right if you look at this all my this class is here this class is here they're all well well clustered grouped together and well separated from each other so from this i'll know that i can easily build simple machine learning models simple classification models to separate these characters we'll see that we'll see we'll run uh, we'll run various machine learning algorithms as we learn on mnist dataset